Yo, what is up? Welcome to Ninja Geek Games. They say that Rome wasn't built in a day, meaning we need time to create great things. But Alley Cat Games can test this with a two to five player game of dividing and claiming lands after the empire has fallen with Rome in a day. In this game, players aim to build their own domain and score victory points, but this is carried out by taking land presented by other players. You'll need to outguess your opponents, perhaps provide valuable gems to sweeten the deal, all the while not knowing what will be available to you. Let's take a look. So, I've set up here for a three player game with each player having a stack of land tiles, a unique building cards with an assortment of buildings on, some gems and two choice cards. Each player gets a screen as well as a reminder tile that indicates the direction that tiles are taken from. Gameplay is pretty straightforward and most of the phases occur simultaneously by all players in a round. You first draw the top 5 tiles from your stack, revealing the lands of which there are 5 types, and they are olive groves, vineyards, fields, towns and quarries. Your building cards are separated into four sections representing rounds, and so each round you take the two topmost buildings and place them on the first two revealed land tiles. This is where the sneaky Roman tactics come into play, where you then shield your land tiles from other players with the screens provided and divide them into two sets. Now, all of this happens at the same time and the two sets of land tiles a player creates can have any ratio. So here we have a 2 and a 3, but here we have a 1 and a 4. Also, the set containing the least amount of tiles must have a gem token placed on it and these are worth victory points at the end of the game. Next, you look at what's available and then choose a tile set from one neighbouring player whilst the other takes one of yours. To ensure this is done fairly, all players first choose one of their choice cards and reveal these at the same time to show whether they're taking a small or a larger tile set from their neighbour. The direction of this trade is indicated by these double-sided reminder cards where in the first and third rounds you take from the left, and in other rounds you take from the right. Once you've claimed tiles, you then build your map or expand on your empire, with all the tiles in your play area that you gained this round that includes those not selected by your neighbour. The placement of land tiles, to include those that came with buildings on, becomes the main aspect of the game at this stage, and this is how you score endgame victory points. These are awarded for same coloured tiles sitting in groups adjacent to buildings of the same colour. So, pretty simple gameplay with you drawing land tiles, placing buildings and creating sets. Players then choose a set from one neighbour whilst losing one of their own to another, and these can come with buildings and or precious gems. During this time, you need to quickly look at the reveal tiles from neighbouring players and their empire to try and second guess what they may present or what they may take from you, but you won't have long. And don't forget, other players will be in the same position as you, hence where the gems come in. These are worth quite a few victory points at the end of the game and will sit alongside your smallest tile set. Therefore, players need to decide on which tiles make up this set. You may want to refrain from including a building on a tile as these drive the end game victory points, but then you'll also have that dilemma in your selection where that neighbour won't know which of your land tiles are left. I like the scoring mechanic where victory points are tallied at the end of the fourth round and are generated from the number of tiles in your empire adjacent to that of buildings of the same colours. Therefore, you can have pockets of tiles across the map scoring points if you were zabby with placing tiles with buildings on. I really enjoyed Rome in a day. It's easy to teach, simple to play, and as most of the round allows players to carry out actions at the same time, it's relatively quick with no downtime. I do like the cut and choose mechanic of separating your tiles and not quite knowing what will be presented to you or what will be taken, as well as expanding your map area to decide how best to score those victory points. To get the best out of the game, I'd refrain from a two player count. It's still fun, but you just end up claiming and losing tiles from the same opponent, which is not as engaging as it is for three to five players. Nevertheless, I enjoyed this and so did my family and young ones as they were able to grasp the concepts fairly quickly. 
If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. This is Ninja Geek Games. Cheers.